Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vloggy thing. So, it's been a little while since I've done one of these things. I've been working on the stereoscopics display. actually had one, uh, like, actual, like, presentation. I showed it to people. Uh, Saturday. Last Saturday. So, what? A week from yesterday. Yeah. So, it was a Call of Duty tournament. So, this was actually a real thing. It wasn't like a, a company party or anything like that. It was actually a real presentation to people I don't know, people that weren't expecting. They, always, they show up and, holy shit, there's Oculus. Um, now, of course, it was still the DK2 because the CV1 hasn't been shipped yet. We have one on order. Nor has the Vive. We also have one on order. Um, what else is there? We were... we're <laughs> This is actually kind of hilarious. As a joke, my dad signed up for the opportunity to pay $3,000 for the Microsoft HoloLens. <laughs> Basically, he we uh, an MSDN account is an account that you pay an ass load of money to Microsoft, and they allow you access to like all of their software. I mean, there are tiers and stuff, so, like, uh, this tier of MSDN gets access to the developer stuff. The more expensive tier gets access to the developer stuff and the operating systems. And the even more expensive tier gets everything. You know, that kind of thing. Um, he's grandfathered in. He's been in it for, like, 10, 20 years or something absolutely ridiculous like that. So he used that kind of as leverage to get into the potential to pay $3,000 for a developer's kit for the HoloLens, and specifically noted that he probably will not be actually developing for the HoloLens. Of course, I know him. If he actually got the HoloLens, he would be developing for it, or he would find some way to develop for it. In one way or the other, he would actually be progressing the HoloLens. I know him. I know, I know how he works way too well. But... Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to get it, and even if we are going to get it, last I heard, and this was before he let me know that he put in the request, they were on their, their third round of it or something like that, so it's going to be like months before we even find out, let alone before we get one. Um, so, anyways, um, so I was working on the stereoscopic stuff, and I want to share a story that I've learned recently about stereoscopics, and this might actually be useful for people in the future, for VR and stuff like that. So, for reasons that I have long since forgotten, I ran the Steam VR performance test. And if you don't know what that is, it is a piece of software that you can get from Steam. Literally, you go into Steam, go into the store, type search for Steam VR, and it will be like one of the first ones that show up. Steam VR performance test. It's free, and it's just a little piece of software that you run on your PC to test if your PC is ready for VR or not. And its result comes back in a nice, friendly little bar graph kind of thing. So on this side, it has not ready, and it's in red. And in the middle, it has compatible, and it's in yellow. And on this side, it has, it's, you know, you're ready, and it's in green, basically. So the further up the bar you go, the better you are off for VR. So if you're on the low end of compatible, that means you'll be able to play with VR, but it won't be a perfect experience. But if you're on the high end of ready, you are rocking. You are ready to go. You're probably ready for the second iteration of VR at that point. I don't know. I guess we'll find out eventually. So, for like I said, for reasons that I have long since forgotten, I ran the Steam VR performance test, even though on this very PC, I have been running VR for... Oh, fuck, a year and a half, two years now? I had the DK1, it was running great, and I've been running the DK2, it runs great. So, I ran it, and it goes through its ting, and it's this neat little portal callback kind of thing. So it has Peabody beaten to hell coming in, and then it's got this exploded view of him, and it's actually really kind of cool looking, but for reasons I don't understand, it's in a 1280 by 720 screen window. It's a 14... Well, it's a 4K monitor, but I have it set to 1440, and it shows up in this little tiny itty-bitty 720p screen window. I have no idea why it does that. So I'm watching it, and I'm doing it, and I'm like, oh, that's actually kind of cute. 
uh, it's a good way to test out VR. Uh, and then the report comes in, and it says it's at the bottom of not ready. And I believe my exact quote was, I'm sorry, what? This PC, right now, has a 6-core Core i7. So basically it runs 12 threads, uh, 6 cores, 12 threads, Core i7 running, um, let's see, it's a Haswell chip, it's running at 3.4 gigahertz, I think? I forget. Um, so powerhouse freaking processor. Uh, and it's got twin GTX 980s. Now, these aren't even, you know, just the regular 980s. These are the powerhouse 980s. It's not a TI. When I bought these things, the TIs didn't exist. But they are power... This is the most powerful GTX 980 I could buy at the time. Okay? And I think both of them were like $550 a piece. If I remember the statistics correctly, it was something absolutely fucking ridiculous, like 2046 CUDA cores and each one was running at like 1.3 gigahertz or something absolutely asinine like that. And I'm not kidding when I say it was asinine because all the other ones were like, it, you know, still rated in megahertz. So like 800, 900 megahertz. This one was one of the few that I found that it was actually rated in gigahertz. So it, they're wicked powerful video cards. Probably still can't stand up to a GT, uh, 980 Ti, but still, I have two of them. Okay? Powerhouse freaking video cards. So it's telling me I'm at the bottom of not ready. I'm like, what the shit? Okay, so I start fiddling with settings, turning off things inside of Windows, turning off services, closing things that I was using in the background, you know, all the stuff that you're supposed to do anyways. So I go through and I do all these tests. And, uh, you know, I get the memory usage down. That's usually how I measure what is being used on my computer, is how much memory is being used. I have a base understanding of how much Windows needs and how much it's going to use when it's not doing anything else, and I have a base understanding of how much I use regularly, so I'm getting the memory down, down, down. I think I got a total of 1.2 gig usage, which is impressive for Windows 10. It's impressive for pretty much anything Windows after Windows XP, actually. Vista was bad, 7, 7 regularly used 2 gig, 8 was the same, and 10 is the same. Um, if you give it the RAM to use, it will use that RAM. If you don't have that much RAM, it won't use that much RAM. It's, I don't fully understand why it does it, but it does it, it's some kind of performance thing. I think it, they said it was super fetch, fuck, I don't remember. But basically, I'm sitting there, I get it to drop down, drop down, and I get it to 1.2 gig of RAM usage. I'm like, okay, there we go. Let's try this test again. So I run the test, and I'm watching this test like a hawk, and it's smooth as silk. It is buttery, buttery smooth, beautiful, gorgeous, smooth, fluid, fluid motions, perfect. Not ready. I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, maybe the Steam test is actually broken. Okay, it, it wouldn't be the first thing I've seen from Valve that actually broke, but it would still strike me as weird. So I grab my laptop. Okay, now, I've shown this laptop before. It's the big, honkin', powerful laptop that I spent way too much money on to have a portable platform for the Oculus Rift. So it's got a GTX 980M in it. Okay, a single GTX 980M, and it's got a four-core i7, so four core, eight thread. So I sit it down in here, fire it up, make sure it's plugged in so it's not doing any kind of power save or anything, and I run the Steam VR test there. And it goes through and it does this thing, I'm like, it still looks buttery smooth here, and it comes out high side of compatible. I'm like, okay, wait a second, wait a second. This laptop is high side of compatible. This bastard, which is like twice as powerful, is on the low side of not ready, what the shit. So I pull out the 3D Mark software. It's a software I've been playing with for a while, and it's a pretty good benchmarking tool that you can play with, and it's you, there's a free version on Steam as well, so I use the hell out of it. And I remember after I got the two GTX 980s, I ran it on this, software, or on this computer just as a test to see what it was, and it said it was like, 
you know, it was better than 96% of all computers that had run this test. Okay, so I fire it up on the laptop and I run it on the laptop just to get a baseline because the laptop seems to be working. And at this point, I'm believing it is something wrong with my PC and not with the Steam software. So I run it on my laptop to get a baseline and it said it was better than 78% uh, of all PCs that had run the test. So it wasn't quite 4K gaming PC, but it was still better than a regular gaming PC kind of thing. So it's still a powerhouse laptop. It is a beast of a laptop. And then I run it on here, just as a, you know, just as a comparison. It's same exact test, same exact situation, still have all of the background services off and all that fun stuff. And it comes back and it tells me that it is better than 44% of all PCs. 44. Now, I know that people have been upgrading their PCs to be get ready to for, for when VR comes out. I expected my, you know, better than percentage to be lower, but 44% plus lower than my laptop? What the shit is going on? And again, for reasons that I don't remember, I ran the Steam Performance or Steam VR performance test again and actually read the damn error okay um seriously when you're working with computers read the damn error messages they tend to actually give you the information you need so i read the damn error message and it says that i did not exceed 60 frames per second at all during that test and i'm like what bullshit i've been running 75 frames per second on the oculus forever because the the dk2 its refresh rate is 75 hertz, so 75 frames per second, and I've been running that forever. And yeah, it runs at 75 frames per second. I've tested this. In fact, I tested this, like, quite literally the day before I actually ran that, now that I think about it. But yes, um, I knew my computer was far more capable than 60 frames per second. And then it dawns on me. I've seen this problem on my PC before. Grand Theft Auto 5 runs at 60 frames per second. It will get up to 60 frames per second and it will fucking stay there. No matter what I do, it will sit at 60 frames per second, hard as a rock, nice and solid. I figured it was a limitation of Grand Theft Auto 5 because in the settings, it literally gives me the option for my refresh rate to be 30 or 60. And that's it. So I figured it was a limitation of Grand Theft Auto 5. And I was fine with that. I'm like, I'm okay with that. It gives me 60 frames per second. I'm happy. I'm sure some people would be kind of pissy if they had 120, but, or if they didn't have 120, but I'm fine with 60. And then it occurs to me, again, that people have been mentioning running GTA 5 at 120 frames per second. And I've always been slightly confused about that. And it didn't really click in my head until just then that something was up. It's all this evidence just started piling up in my head that there's something wrong with my PC. So I started digging into it. And of course, we go to the master of all information, Google, and I typed in GTX 980 limiting to 60 FPS. And it comes back, you know, I read a couple of search results, and the closest thing I could find to anything even remotely resembling relevant says... Uh, make sure you have VSync disabled. Now, VSync is vertical sync so that your monitor's refresh, your, your video card forces itself to output at your monitor's refresh rate. Now, most TVs run at 60 hertz, so 60 frames per second. That is something that, that's actually very old school, comes from back in CRT days when everything was based off of the, you know, frequency of the power, which is 60 hertz. So everything was based off of that timing. So NTSC, in the US anyways, I should emphasize this. This is in the US that everything is done this way. So NTSC, the way we get broadcast TV, was based on the 60 hertz frequency. So black and white TV, original old school black and white TV, ran at 60 hertz. Now, brand new TV, like Kellard TV, runs at 59.94 hertz. 
so just slightly under 60 FPS. And the reason for that is the rest of that information is taken up by the Keller. Now, that's also an interesting little thing. Uh, Keller TV is actually black and white TV with Keller overlaid on top of it. Had no idea about that, but it's actually apparently a thing. Yeah, I didn't know that until I asked about why there wasn't such a thing as Keller static. And that's because all TVs are black and white. It's just some of them can actually overlay Keller. So that's why static's black and white. Interesting factoid. Anyways, so that's why everything is based on 60 frames per second. That's why your TVs are 60 frames per second. That's why your monitors are 60 frames per second. That's why video games are 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second or 120 frames per second because everything has to fit into that 60 FPS range because of screen tearing. Now, I, I think I've mentioned this before, where if your monitor's refresh rate is 60 FPS and it drops below that, you'll have a problem where part of your screen will update and part of your screen won't. So this will update the frame, or yeah, the frame will update here, but it won't update here until the next loop. So this, uh, the top will always be, you know, one frame ahead of the bottom and it causes this little line to go across your screen where it's noticeable that it's not lining up properly, and that's screen tearing. And that happens when the frames don't even out to the refresh rate of your monitor. So think about it. You have a 60 hertz monitor, and you're running at 58 frames per second. How does 58 divide into 60? Well, it doesn't. So your monitor gets confused. Same with if it's like 48. Your monitor gets confused and causes screen tearing. It's really annoying. I see it on YouTube all the fucking time. It's annoying as shit, actually. Um, <coughs> but uh, that's why 30 frames per second is actually a standard because 30 times 2 is 60. So each frame in 30 frames per second is displayed twice in a 60 hertz monitor. So you get something that's smooth. It just, the frame lasts twice as long as it would if it was 60. And that makes sense. If it was 30, it would still be lasting twice as long. Now, the same can be said for 120. But 120 was invented not just to match the 60 hertz of most American TVs, but to match the 24 frames per second of cinematic movies. Now, I'm sure people have heard of this argument before. I know it came up big when uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, no, not Lord of the Rings, um, The Hobbit, that's it. When The Hobbit came out, it was recorded at 48 frames per second, and everybody got pissed off because it wasn't cinematic. Now, I think I've pointed that out before where I, where we have been convinced by the movies that crap is cinematic. 24 frames per second is garbage. And it's really, really, really noticeable in the high action sequences in uh, Lord of, or in uh, The Hobbit. Yeah, okay, let's see if I can actually think when I speak. Yes, The Hobbit Unexpected Journey it's really noticeable that it's at 24 frames per second in those high action sequences because you can see the jitter. You can see it jumping around. And the reason that that happens is because they've recorded it at 48 frames per second. So this there's less motion blur. So if you're recording at a very low frame rate and somebody goes like this, you're it's going to blur. But if you record at a really high frame rate and somebody goes like this, it's going to blur significantly less. So if you take that really high frame rate and then drop it down to a really low frame rate, like say if you take your 48 frames per second and then cut half of them out so it's 28 or 24 frames per second, it's going to look like crap because it's going to be jumpy and skipping. And if you're looking for it, and in my case, I wasn't looking for it. I noticed it. I actually thought there was something wrong with my damn computer. Um, but anyways, let's actually try to get back on topic here. Uh, so 24 frames per second, which is cinematic. It's my official sentiments on that note too, by the way. Um, 24 frames, or yeah, 24 and 60 go into 120. So it's just simple math to get it to flow smoothly. That's why 120 hertz monitors came out, or I should say TVs came out. And then 240 
hertz TVs came out for 3D. So um, you could have 120 for this eye and 120 for that eye, and you don't lose any smoothing or anything like that. So that's why that's that way. Now, that big pile of insanity that I just described is why NVIDIA came out with something called G-Sync. So G-Sync. And it's a multi-sync monitor. Now, this is old technology. Uh, news to me that it was, though. But when I described what a G-Sync monitor was to my dad, he told me about a multi-sync monitor that existed way back in the day, like back in the early Mac days, where Apple decided, hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to change the refresh rate on our computers so you're forced to buy our monitors. And somebody came out and said, you know what? I'm going to make a monitor that reads your refresh rate. It's going to be a multi-sync monitor, and you can basically plug it into anything, and it queries the video card, says, what's your, ref what's your output rate? I'll adjust to that. Well, that's what G-Sync is, kind of. Basically, what G-Sync is, is the video card telling the monitor how fast to refresh live. So if you're running at 30 FPS, the monitor is going to be refreshing at 30 hertz. If you go up to, you know, 40, then your monitor is going to be refreshing at 40. If you go up to 80, your monitor is going to be refreshing at 80. So that's, that's what G-Sync is. It live updates what your refresh rate is. That way, no matter what drops in frames per second you get, it still looks smooth. You don't get screen tearing or anything. And I thought that was awesome. I'm like, yes, I want one of these. So I got this bastard. It is an Acer XB280HK. At least that's what it says on the monitor itself. It is 28 inches. It is a 4K LED monitor. G-Sync. Cost me $750. All right. How does this all relate back to what I was talking about at the beginning of this video? You know, remember when I was doing the benchmarks and failing, you know, because at this point, I'm sure a lot of you forgot the entire point of this video. Um, so the research I was saying said disable V-Sync. Well, I'd never enable V-Sync because I have G-Sync. I have G-Sync enabled, so why would I enable V-Sync? It would be my video card asking the monitor what its refresh rate is, even though the monitor is asking the video card what its refresh rate is, and it's probably not a good thing to do that. So one or the other, not both. So I have G-Sync enabled. I don't have V-Sync enabled. Now, when I first did research on this monitor, when I first bought it, I looked up and down and left and right all over the internet that I could find to find its maximum refresh rate. And the only bit of information that I could ever find, and I found this on multiple websites, was that its persistence was one millisecond. So it, when the LED light turns on and then it turns off again, the fastest it can do that to where it's on and then straight up off, like not just dimming or fading out or anything like that, it's just off. From on to off, it's one millisecond. So I figured it's not telling me what the maximum refresh rate is because there isn't a maximum refresh rate because it's a G-Sync monitor, it's supposed to be, you know, basing itself off the video card. And its theoretical maximum should be 1000 hertz. One millisecond uh, persistence would equal 1000 frames per second that it should theoretically be able to output. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. That's awesome. So it ties directly into the video card and that's how it does its thing. Sweet. Awesome. I'll pick it up. I'll buy it. And I did. So after I did these tests and they failed miserably on this PC, I did a little bit more research on the, on the monitor. And I have found out that this is also true. If you wait a year or two, you tend to be able to find more information than was willing to be released by the company when, it, when the product first came out. I had a Polaroid TV, the same exact thing. Polaroid TV in the manual. It specifically said its native resolution was 1920 by 1080. Several years later, I actually did some research on it and trying to figure out why at 1920 by 1080 it looked blurry as shit. 
and I found out that the actual real native resolution was 1280 by 720. That's why 1080 looked like shit. Oh, okay. Same thing here. Did some extra research on this monitor. Turns out this monitor's maximum refresh rate is 60 hertz. 60 hertz. I spent $750 for a G-Sync, a multi-sync monitor that only goes to 60 hertz. Waste of $750. Considering it's 28 inches wide, 4K causes eye strain. I cannot read the text at 4K, so I keep it at 1440. In fact, I used to keep it at 1080 because I couldn't fucking read it at 1440. Uh, did manage to get over that little hump, but I still have problems reading it at 4K, so I can't have I can't use that part of the monitor. I bought this monitor for good frames per second. It can't do that. And here's the kicker, and this is where I know Acer is fucking lying to me. In the settings of this monitor, you can put up a bar that will tell you what your current frames per second are. So it won't give you like a little number, but it'll give you a bar. It's like four pixels wide. It can barely be seen on the side of the monitor, which I do kind of like. If you're really looking for it, you can find it, but if you're not looking for it, it doesn't interfere with the game. So I like that. So on this bar, there are ticks, lines, that give me a general idea of where it is in the graph, go the entire way up, okay? So when I'm running something at 60 frames per second, and I know I'm running it at 60 frames per second because I have quite a few other software that will tell me the FPS, 60 frames per second on this bar is here on the monitor. Now the ticks go the entire way up the screen, but it maxes out here. That is bullshit. And I'm just gonna say that straight up, that is fucking bullshit. So, yeah. So let's get to the actual moral of this particular story. And it's not, don't spend an ass load of money on hardware. It's not. The moral of the story is do your research. G-Sync monitors do have a maximum frames per second. If you can't find the maximum frames per second on the monitor, don't buy it because it's probably not worth mentioning. That's why they don't. So, yeah, that's why I couldn't find it anywhere, including Acer's tech documents on this damn monitor. It wasn't there because they didn't want to advertise the fact that this monitor was crap. I wouldn't have bought it if I knew that it was 60 hertz. I, I really, really wouldn't have. I wouldn't have wasted my money on this monitor if I'd have known that it maxes at 60 hertz because that's bullshit. Oh, and for the record, disable G-Sync. The video card real or the video card stopped giving two shits about what the monitor can do and started outputting everything. Did the Steam VR test again? I'm at the high side of ready on this PC, so it kicked the living crap out of my laptop. But that also is an interesting factoid for my laptop too. My laptop monitor is also G-Sync, and because it's G-Sync, I have G-Sync enabled but it was maxing its frames per second at 140 FPS. Holy shit. I just have to say that, holy shit, this mo my laptop's G-Sync monitor can go at 140 FPS. <laughs> that is amazing. That laptop is far more badass than I ever gave it credit for. It is an amazing laptop. Ugh. But let that be a lesson to anybody out there. If you're ever talking to somebody and they tell you that putting together a computer is like putting together Legos, make a mental note in your mind to never ask them for technical support ever because these people have not thought through what they're saying. And people that don't think through what they're saying tend not to be good tech support people. Building a PC is a pain in the ass. Now, you could just go out, buy a whole bunch of parts, put them together, and have a working PC. You can do that. But it's a PC that's going to give you trouble. If you're, unless you're, like, really super lucky, 
it's probably going to be a PC that gives you trouble. And I'll give you a couple examples. One is the G-Sync thing. You know, my PC is now severely limited, again, by the fact that I have this monitor. So, its refresh rate, I have G-Sync disabled, so it's going to switch to its native refresh rate, which is 60 hertz. So I'm back limited to a 60 hertz monitor. But I'm no longer limited to 60 hertz coming out of my computer, so this is slightly better. But that means I'm going to have a problem with screen tearing again. It's going to annoy the shit out of me. It's something I'm going to have to deal with because I'm not spending much, that much money on another damn monitor. I'm not. Not until this one literally dies. But, uh, yeah, so, G-Sync, watch out for those numbers. It's just kind of insane. Another example is actually from this computer as well. So, back when I was building this computer, I was doing research on the numbers, making sure that all the parts match up, and I'm not just talking socket size for the processor, or, you know, memory speeds, DDR3 versus DDR4, or timing, or anything like that. I'm not talking about that. I mean, okay, I am talking about that, because I made damn sure that those things matched up, but I was looking at the, the motherboard, and I was reading the statistics on the motherboard, and there was something in fine print that I had never heard before. It said, if you're going to be running SLI, make sure that your processor has 40 PCI Express lanes, or your primary PCI Express slot will run at 16x, and your secondary slot will run at 8x, and your third slot will run at 4x. If you want all three to run at 16x, you have to buy a processor that has 40 PCI Express lanes. And I'm like, what the shit's a PCI Express lane? I'd never heard that statistic before. Never heard of it before. So I did some research on it, I looked it up, and apparently it's actually a thing. I still have no idea what the hell it's actually for, but it is a thing, and it's a very important thing if you're going to be doing badass PC stuff, because most processors have 20 PCI Express lanes. And if you have 20 PCI Express lanes on your processor, you cannot have two video cards running at 16x. You can't. You can't pass enough information to the processor to do it. So you have, and the only other option is 40 PCI Express lanes. So you have to get a processor with 40 PCI Express lanes to be able to run two video cards at 16x. And apparently it's enough to run three video cards at 16x, even though I wasn't going to waste my money and buy a third of GTX 980. Maybe later, when the prices drop a little bit, I might pick up a third one. But in all honesty, probably not. Eh, I can't say I really care that much. But, uh... I know this is absolutely true. I know this is absolutely true. Because a week after finding out that information... It, I'm not kidding when I say it took me a week to properly research building this PC. After a week of research... I found a processor that was about $200 less expensive, so we're talking $300 instead of $500. I know, ridiculously expensive processor. And its only, only statistic that was less was that it was like 0.2 gigahertz less. So it was like 3.4 instead of 3.6, or 3.6 instead of 3.8. I actually forget what the processor is. So, it's still got some serious power, it's still a 12-thread processor, but it's not as expensive. It doesn't have quite as much power, and I'm like, okay, well, why would I spend $500 for an extra 0.2 gigahertz if I'm more than likely going to be overclocking the processor anyways? I don't anymore, but I figured if I was, why would I spend the extra $200? So I bought the cheaper processor. Completely forgetting about the fact that the cheaper processor has 20 PCI Express lanes, and my primary video card now runs at 16x, and my secondary video card now runs at 8x. So, I will leave you with that. Beware of the PC Master Race. Anybody who calls himself a Master Race is probably a fucking moron. And I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, keep playing the game, and have fun. Now I'm going to go take some day or night quill and I'm going to go to bed. Good night.